Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, first, uh, just quickly, my position on, on employer health insurance or ERISA. Uh, we, we're going to always have a government program in this country, uh, but we need to give the business community the flexibility to uh, provide the best coverage at the best uh, value for their employees. Uh, the business community will figure this out, and my position is to give this coverage the same waivers that the Affordable Care Act gave to unions and the faith-based company, a faith-based uh, part of the health care industry, uh, so that we can get totally away from federal regulatory issues dealing with ERISA. Uh, as far as compliance and all the cost and everything that's, that's being added to that. And I also want self-employed people to be able to uh, participate in ERISA. We don't have time to discuss that today, but I would like your written response to th that, uh, that uh, idea uh, as far as going forward and how to solve this tremendous cost increase in, uh, in health insurance. In recent years, there, uh, another matter is, is growing ad adoption of so-called alternative funding programs uh, in employer-sponsored plans. Some stakeholders have suggested that AFP vendors divert employees into their programs and push employers to adopt discriminatory, discriminatory benefit designs that, that single out medicines that treat specific condition. It suggested this type of action could violate ERISA and HIPAA compliance. Representative McBath and I recently sent a letter urging the Department of Labor to, in, uh, Labor to investigate the prevalence of AFPs in the employer-sponsored health coverage market and asked the DOL to take uh, action to prevent these predatory practices. Ms. Schumann how, Schumann, how well do you think employers are aware of potential ERISA, ERISA, ERISA compliance risks with AFPs? Have you provided any education about compliance risks to member companies? Thank you for that question, Congressman. The Council's membership typically rely on traditional PBM and drug payment models. So members have not raised AFPs as an issue that I'm aware of, and the Council has not actively addressed AFP with its members. It does sound like this is a certainly a concerning practice, but I said it hasn't been brought to our attention by our membership. But certainly, drug costs are a big concern mm -hmm. for our members and just want to take this opportunity to again offer my support for the great bipartisan work of this committee already in the Lower Cost More Transparency Act to bring more transparency and oversight of PBMs in an effort to do that. Well, it's, it's a long and frustrating fight to get your medications approved through the PBM step therapy process, it often results in missed days of work and a worsening of their condition. The lack of transparency, as you mentioned, uh, PBM practices make it, makes it difficult for employers to uh, assess whether the administration of drug benefits aligns with their employees' best interest and well-being. Uh, many people I represent in the Georgia's 12th District experience these same frustrations, which is why I'm proud to co-sponsor the Safe Step Act, which would ensure employer health plans, including their uh, contracted PBMs, offer an ex expedient and medically reasonable step therapy exceptions. Dr. Frunstein, uh, how would legislation such as Safe Step Act help people with chronic conditions who are covered by the ERISA plan? So I haven't studied the Safe Step Act specifically, but it sounds like it would streamline uh, prior authorization process and speed up the process of getting certain medications when other medications are not working as expected. What can be done to help employers navigate the complex benefit structures, pharmacy networks, and formularies uh, that are obscured by the PBM incentives? So PBM incentives are complex, and I think building an employee benefit program is complex as well for many employers, even large employers, and sometimes beyond the expertise of many benefit managers. Um, that, that's why they use consultants, they mm -hmm. use risk attorneys. Uh, they often uh, learn from each other. 
the conferences, there are some purchasing coalitions that employers have joined uh, to help them navigate uh, the complex healthcare system and provide them some leverage. Good, thank you. Uh, I am out of time. I have additional questions I'd like to submit for the record. And with that, I yield back.